Howdy everybody, this is the Roaming Prepper. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, Sassy and I recently found a new place to look for product that's secondhand that may save us some money. It's kind of a new find for us, so I uh, wanted to share it with you. I'll be right back and then let's look into what we found. This is the Roaming Prepper. Uh, thanks for coming back and thanks for checking out the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And by all means, if you have any questions about my content, feel free to leave questions in the comments below. Again, what I post, as I've said before, this is just recommendation stuff from my own experience that I've learned as a result of going out and trying stuff. By all means, do your own research. Make sure you're informed and are making the right choice for you, your family, and your situation. That being said, recently we found out that there was a deep dive sales warehouse in our area. So I've heard of these. I hadn't seen one in the area. A few have opened in this part of Texas. What it is, is this is a company that they go and they buy merchandise secondhand from places like Amazon, Walmart, Target. This is stuff that either was returned or more importantly, they were unable to deliver. So a lot of it is actually brand new. They buy this stuff by the lot, by the pallet or by the shipping container at a flat rate. And whatever's inside is what they get. And then they resell it to the public. So the place out here, the way it operates is they restock every Thursday. They open Friday and Saturday with absolutely new arrivals and you pay nine bucks an item, whatever it is. If it's a laptop, it's nine bucks. If it's a shoelace, it's nine bucks. Each item, nine bucks. Then every couple of days or every day, the amount per item goes down. By Wednesday, the day before their restock day, any item that's remaining is only a dollar at which point they clear the floor and they bring new product in Thursday and start all over again Friday. Um, the way they were set up is rows of bins and they basically poured them roughly by category, but it wasn't very well organized. And you just kind of dig through it. So people were just kind of meandering in a zigzag pattern, digging through these bins of products. Uh, there was stuff ranging from uh, iPhone and iPad cases to, um, baseball caps, there was some sporting goods equipment, dumbbells, uh, there was a variety of stuff. So um, we found certain things that we were looking at anyway, and we knew the price was higher. So I'm going to share with you guys what we found. So I'm going to adjust the camera and then we're going to take a look at what we have. Okay, gang. So um, we had some stuff that we found that we thought was interesting. We came back with this bag. So I'm going to move the bag over. And uh, one of the first things we found is this box. And we opened it and discovered that inside is what is called a travel pet blanket. Now, this may sound kind of goofy, but what you do, you put this across the back seat of your vehicle, and it actually protects the back seat of the vehicle from your pet's claws. So if you're transporting multiple animals, especially like we do, we sometimes travel with the corgis and the papillon. Um, this would go through the back seat of my pickup truck and come up the driver and passenger seat on the other side and create a basket whereby the interior of the vehicle is protected from them damaging it. Um, the dogs are usually pretty good. They don't bite the truck or they don't t deliberately tear anything up, but their claws and if they start roughhousing, they'll damage it. These retail for about 50 bucks, this particular brand, and this is rubberized. It's about a quarter inch thick, believe it or not, and it's padded. Uh, this can also be used if you're in a hotel or in a remote location. You can use it on the floor as a bedding for your canines. Um, this retails about 50 bucks. Um, we got it for nine bucks. And then, it, as you can see here, it has straps 
I might do a separate video on this. It has pockets for their accessories and it straps into the seats to prevent your pets from damaging. And it also kind of contains them in your vehicle. Um, as you guys know, I travel a lot and being able to contain your pet while you're on the road is a big deal. So that was a, uh, they call it cargo net for dogs. I forgot the name of the brand. Um, that was at the bottom of a heap of what was literally junk. So of course, as we continue to dig in that same bin, we actually found a second one, which is actually uh, smaller. So this one will actually fit my wife's SUV and this one would fit my pickup truck. So now regardless of which vehicle we take, even if we're just taking them to the vet or we're just doing a day trip, the dogs go out, they get dirty, they get full of mud. They don't have to travel in the back where they can be injured. They can go in the back seat and they are protected from the elements and they're not tearing up my vehicle. So, while we continue looking, uh, we came across this box, which I didn't know what it was. Um, obviously, a lot of times they remove the uh, address of whoever ordered it. So you just wind up with this weird box, but at least for those of you who are YouTube content creators, or if you are just somebody who does videography at home, it's an entire tripod set, including the camera holder, uh, the, um, the pivot, the little, uh, I guess the little arm so you can rotate the cameras. You can attach different types of camera to it. It has a standard, um, screw port so you can attach digital cameras you can attach your pc camera you take it off your tripod put it in here or you can attach a phone holder which comes included it's one of the standard photography screws and it's a little tripod so this will definitely help me make some additional content these retail from what i found anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks brand new again we got this one for nine bucks at the event so um that was a neat find for me uh and for sassy because we're both doing different types of social media but also if you're traveling and you have to record something or even if you're just you know doing it for the family a nice way to save money so that was a neat find not necessarily a preparedness thing this is more a uh i can now make better youtubes because i have more tools to do it with as you can see, the corgi is back here sniffing through the boxes. And we found some arts and crafts stuff, which I won't go through. And then I found this. Uh, believe it or not, this is a shoulder holster. Um, it is actually suitable for mid-sized automatic. So I'm pretty confident my Springfield will definitely fit in here. And I bet you my HK could squeeze in here too, uh, depending on what I'm carrying. I spend a lot of time in a truck. And even though I love a hip holster, if I'm sitting down in a vehicle, it's not always easily accessible. Being able to have something like this, it is not a super high-end shoulder rig, but it is suitable and it seems to be sufficiently constructed for me to travel um, in, you know, in my vehicle. And if, unless I'm, obviously, if I'm doing some tactical training, this is not the holster, uh, but it'll certainly do enough for commuting uh, or going to the woods when I want to be a bit more discreet, but I'm driving and a hip holster just doesn't make sense. I don't like leaving a loaded firearm in my dash console. Uh, if it's in a proper holster, I feel a hell of a lot better. Um, these retail 20 to 25, uh, depending on the material. This is ballistic nylon. I've seen the leather ones go up to 120. I actually found my leather shoulder rig for my big Beretta, uh, which is a $140 um, Galco rig at a surplus store, much the same way I found this stuff. And I got that for 20 bucks and that was leather leather. It's a really nice rig. This one's a little lighter weight, but it'll suffice for commuting and light duty while I'm driving or, you know, if I'm out in the woods taking pictures, 
uh, or even, I bet you I can even use it for uh, when I take my walks with the dogs. It's discreet, it'll be under my vest, but it'll be accessible. I'll have to practice a little bit. It's been a while since I used a shoulder rig. But again, a shoulder holster um, uh, should retail for about three or four times the price I got it for, and I found it at the bottom of one of the bins. Most of the people there didn't know what it was. As a matter of fact, two other guys grabbed hold of it and they didn't know. So they didn't know what to, what it was and they just threw it back and I saw it and as soon as the guy left, I took it. Um, so for traveling and especially remember, if you have to evacuate and your animals get filthy or they get soot or ash on them, they get water on them in an emergency, you can at least protect the back of your vehicle and transport the animals and then when you get to your destination you can still use this kind of as a bedding underneath small vehicle big vehicle that's about a hundred dollars worth of product I got for 20 bucks um, because we were actually shopping for these on Amazon and in the stores just before we found this a little tripod really more for my YouTube creation uh, again uh, probably 30 bucks to buy new I got it for under 10 and then a sh surprise uh, shoulder holster um, they had a few other um, firearm and hunting related things, but the quality was poor and uh, they didn't look like a complete set and I didn't want to spend the money on that. I may go back in a few days when the products are down to a buck and just see what's left and maybe I'll find some of those that I can make use of. But in any case, uh, I thought this was a neat find. Hey guys, so that pretty much concludes this short video. I just wanted to bring this kind of place up. Uh, you can find a lot of great product in unexpected places. And I think as preppers, we kind of fixate on certain uh, places like Amazon or Walmart or Sportsman's Warehouse. And we don't look at some of these places like bargain basements, um, junkyards or uh, antique stores or these deep dive uh, resellers who basically buy a shipping container worth of whatever the hell's in there that has been surplused or undeliverable and they walk off with it and then they sort it and resell it themselves. So, you know, take the time. And again, one of them was not a per se a prep, but uh, the other three definitely could be used to in a bug out situation or any kind of travel situation. So this is good stuff to find. Um, again, keep your eye open for deals, right? Uh, part of prepping is the economics of being prepared and you have to stay in budget, but you got to find what you need, what you think you may need. And this is a good way to kind of split the middle and find what you need at a reasonable price. So anyway, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I do appreciate you guys coming by and don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, all I can tell you is look for those deals because the money's getting tight, the inflation's hitting. There's no reason we still can't make a deal and find what we need. Until next time, God bless to all our troops. Godspeed. God bless all of you. And uh, be safe out there. Help each other out. Look for those deals. Until next time, I'll see you later.